She think I wouldn't, you know what I'm saying. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know But uh, today, uh, you know, when, when I was coming up, uh, you know, my father wasn't a, 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 you know, educated man, but one thing he did do, he put, I guess we were, there was five of us, four, four other siblings. He put a fence around our house. And how many of y'all know about them fences? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You couldn't go outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When nobody was home, you couldn't yeah. do what you wanted to do. And you got the kids coming by picking at you. <laughs> you can't come out and play. And all that. But I think I was about 35, 40 years old. One of the uh, gentlemen in the streets there, big timer, you know, did it all, did it that. He said, son, you know, when I used to watch your daddy, y'all was in their yard, he say, none of y'all. He turned out all right. Amen. Amen. Jesus would put a protection around him. Amen. Amen. protection around him. You just got to ask him. When you step outside of whatever fish you got, when you step out. You gotta be a fence around. Je Whoa. Jesus is the only one. Yeah. Yeah. You. So, uh, I'm gonna try to say this now. Give me a minute. <laughs>
with today's discourse, I definitely just want to give thanks and honor to the Almighty. Yes. yes. Not just for my life, health, and strength, but I am so thankful for his gift of a brother by the name of Moses. Amen. Yes. Yes. We are so happy. So excited to see him back in the fold today. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that young man just had heart surgery. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So the idea that he is here with us today and doing yeah. well is nothing yeah. short. read 
Matthew 17. And we're going to look at that first uh, through that ninth verse. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Amen? Amen. And it reads, and it says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. Then he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. When they looked, they saw no one else except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Amen. Don't tell anyone what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Yes. Now, in this text, we find ourselves in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, Matthew was an imperfect man, but he wrote a very great gospel. Yes. A tax collector who is despised in society, but loved by a holy God. Mm -hmm. A publican whose job it was to collect taxes from his countrymen, but ended up collecting souls for the kingdom of heaven. Yes. See, it gives us hope today yes. that no matter who you are, you can still be used by a holy God. Thank you. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter if you're saved or unsaved. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're employed or unemployed. Yes. Or even retire. Yes. God can move and use you yes. to do his work. Yes. God can move and use you to accomplish his goals in your and other people's lives. Yes. So no matter what, give it all to God. Because yes. he will take care of you. Yes. Yes. Now, in this particular text, we see in Matthew's gospel, we find that Jesus is with his disciples. But prior to this, we see in the chapter before that Jesus actually speaks about his death with his disciples. He informed them that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. Mm -hmm. And that he must be killed. But on the third day he will be raised to life. Mm -hmm. Now, it's funny when he says this, Peter actually says, Lord, no, 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 this shall never happen to you. And at that, Jesus rebukes Peter, mm -hmm. saying, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. You are but a stumbling block to me. You don't have the mind or the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, church, that seems a harsh rebuke. <laughs> Peter did not want to see his master die. He did not want to see his master have to die and then be raised again by the hands of those who didn't like him. See, it seemed almost an unusual thing to say to someone who simply loved him. Yeah. But Jesus had to rebuke Peter mm -hmm. because he knew his true purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He knew he was the final plan of salvation. Yeah. He understood that he was the only cog in the great plan of saving the world from itself. Yeah. He was our only protection from the enemy. Believe it or not, Jesus had to stand in the middle of us in destruction so that we could be saved. So that means the sins that we commit both overt and covert, Jesus took on himself so I can have salvation. He took all of his sins onto himself and that was his purpose. See, it's interesting, church, just like Jesus rebuked Peter, I believe there are times where Jesus needs to rebuke us. Yes, yes, yes. He needs to set us straight. Yes. That we understand that it's not our will, but yes. his will yes. that needs to be done. Yes. See, that it's not our desires, but the desires of the Lord, and we should allow him to lead us. Yes. Not our wants, mm -hmm. but always looking to the Father to supply all of our needs. Yes. See, Jesus needs to set us straight so that we can go forth in his ministry. Mm -hmm. 
So when we see this in this red text, it kind of leads us to our text in chapter 17, hmm. where Jesus is with his disciples, and he takes them to a mountain. <laughs> but before we go further, I want you to know that it wasn't all of the disciples, that all the 12 were not present there with him, but only a select few would be privy to what was about to unfold. Well. Church, I've said it many times. But don't you know it's not good to tell everybody your business? Don't you know it's not good to tell everybody about what's going on in your life? Church, they coined the phrase overshare for a reason. Meaning there's some things that you need to keep to yourself. That means I don't need to know about everything that's going on in your family on Facebook or IG. That means I don't need to know about your whole life on any type of social media platform. Sometimes you need to keep some things in the house. They call it house business, amen. You keep that at home. I don't need to know it all. But even with that, if you must talk to somebody, it's important for you to have a group of friends that you can trust. A group of friends that you know will have your best interest at all. Yeah. That if you tell them something private, it stays private. Yeah. And the next day you don't read about it all in right. the Gainesville Sun. Right. See, that's what Jesus regarded in this moment. Yeah. He needed to be kept secret for a while until yeah. he rose from the dead. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he took his closest disciples with him up to this mountaintop. So we saw that as we go forth in this, mm. we see that Jesus and the disciples are on the mountain, mm. and they actually go into a high place, mm. and Jesus is transfigured before them. Wow. Now, we understand the transfiguration of Jesus. Mm. Basically, it lets us know that his raiment became white as snow and that it didn't appear as flesh. He didn't appear as flesh anymore. Mm. But we need to get just a little bit deeper. You see, Jesus was both God and man. Oh, yeah. And at this moment, we see the inter-deity of Jesus come out and shine out through its fleshly vessel. Mm -hmm. See, Matthew states his face shone like the sun, yeah. and his clothes became white as the light. Yeah. Oh, I know that we're talking about the transfiguration yeah. according to Matthew, yeah. but I love the way that Mark describes it in his gospel. He says that his clothes became dazzling white. Right. Whiter than anyone could bleach them. Yeah. So that lets me know Clorox and all the bargain bleaches didn't do this to Christ Jesus. Right. And this was deity coming out from yeah. the flesh. He was allowing mere mortal men to see God and man. Oh my Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Then as he's transfigured, he's joined by Moses. Elijah, who actually start talking to him. And then Peter, always the bold one, he asked Jesus, he said, Lord, can we build three tabernacles or three shelters? One for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then at that moment, a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice came out of it saying, this is my son, hear him. Could you imagine church? The power and the presence of the Almighty God cresting on that mountaintop and cresting over these men. Wow. Just being in the presence of the Almighty. Yes. See, church, I would love to just stay in his presence. Yes. Yes. But see, church, we can get in his presence. Yes. When we are all on one accord in the same mindset, putting our heart stay on yes. Jesus, we can see the same mountaintop experience. Yes. In the presence of God. Yeah. Because when we do that, the Spirit starts to make Himself known. Yeah. And He moves around the church. Yeah. People start getting saved. Chains start to be released. Yeah. Yokes start to be broken. Yeah. And captives start to be set free. Yeah. Because when the Spirit comes in the room, mm -hmm. before you know it, you might start to cry. Yeah. You might start to shout. Yeah. You might start to dance. Yeah. You might start to sing. Yeah. Church, when the spirit comes in a body of believers, yeah. not church goes, but believers, yeah. we are most likely to witness things yeah. that you have never seen in the name yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. It might not be a cloud, mm -hmm. but when the heaviness of the world is released, yeah. your praise starts to come forth. Yeah. God, 
disciples fall to, the, to, their, to their feet. They're actually down on their face, afraid and terrified. Wow. Then Jesus just politely comes up and says, do not be afraid. Yeah. I tell you, it's so awesome. When I am weak, my God is strong. Oh. When I'm afraid, my God is there to comfort me. When I'm all out of sorts, Jesus is right there to take care of me and put me in the right place. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. I'm here and I've got your back. So yes, church, this is the account of the transfiguration of Christ. But what does that mean for your life? And how can you apply it to your everyday living? Mm -hmm. See, I want to turn your attention to one specific verse. And it's where Jesus took the disciples to a high place. Uh -huh. You see, Jesus had to separate himself from the world. Uh -huh. He had to get these finite human beings to a high place so that an infinite deity yes. could be exposed to them. Uh -huh. He needed to get them to a place where the world was lowered and he was lifted high. Yeah. He needed to get to that high mount so he could reveal in place a, a high place and a high elevation. Mm -hmm. So when they arrived to this designated site, they saw Christ clearly. Mm -hmm. They clearly saw his deity. Mm -hmm. So I just want to leave you with something for this first Sunday in this new year. Take me to the mountain. <laughs> Take me to the mountain. <laughs> Floridians, we're not too familiar with mountains. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, Florida is a peninsula state, yeah. mm -hmm. meaning that we're almost almost entirely surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. Florida has hills, mm -hmm. but Florida does not have mountains. Mm -hmm. So for many of us who were born in this state, mountains, we've only seen them on vacation or in the movies. That's right. That's right. But even though we are not familiar with mountains, mm -hmm. We can still understand a mountaintop experience, yes, especially in the Lord. Yes. See, it's interesting. There's a song of the church that actually outlines this mountaintop experience. It starts by saying, I'm pressing on this upward way. Yes. New heights I'm gaining yes. every day. Yes. Still praying as I'm upward bound. <laughs> Make that mistake. 
make his way. Amen. If Christ is compelling you to go, you must follow him. Yeah. If Christ is compelling you to start a new ministry, you must follow him. Yeah. If Christ is compelling you to talk to somebody about his goodness, yeah. then you must follow him. Yeah. If Christ is compelling you simply to call you and tell you to check on somebody, follow him. Yeah. Because he will never lead you down the wrong path. He is looking for you to get to the next level in him. Yes. He will never put you in a place that will never be for your benefit. Well. See, Jesus wants to take us away from the fray, mm -hmm. above the difficulties of life. Mm -hmm. But to get to that point, like the disciples, we must follow him. Yes. Like the disciples, we have to be in lockstep with the master. Oh, yes. Secondly, we must learn to separate ourselves from the world. Yeah. See, in the same verse, it says that they were on a high mount, mm -hmm. but they were apart. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus had to give them this mountaintop experience yes. so that they could be separate from what was going on down in the valley. Mm -hmm. Now, no, this doesn't mean that you need to move out of your neighborhoods mm -hmm. and go into this big religious community. It doesn't mean that you need to pull all your money out from the bank and put it into a religious institution. Well. I'm simply saying that there are times where we need to get out of our routine yeah. and spend some quality time with the master. Yeah. So if you got to put your phone on, the, on the, the, the table, just go ahead and do that so you can talk to King Jesus. Yeah. If you got to stay out of the shopping mall, right. get away from your favorite sports team. Even if you have to get away from clicking the button and shopping on Amazon. Spend some time with the Lord. Spend some time with King Jesus. I guarantee you, you'll find a benefit. See, this is the time that you'll be lockstep with the mess. And not focus on the troubles of the world, but focus on victory in Christ Jesus. Yes. See, this is the time where you get to be a part of something that is bigger than your sins. Oh, yeah. Basically, you just have to learn this one thing, just to steal away to King Jesus. Yes. Church, we have to continue to do that every day in our lives. Yes. Steal away and look for a little guidance from the master. Yes. Steal away and look for some understanding from the master. Yes. See, in those few minutes, things will start to change. Then you'll get lost in him, and before you know it, you won't realize that you spend a whole hour with King Jesus. Yeah. See, you get lost in the goodness of God. Yeah. This is that higher ground experience. Mm -hmm. This is that mountaintop that you want to get to. Yeah. It's the place where God desires you to be, and it's a place where you can see Jesus. Yeah. See, at this point, you are on the mountaintop. Looking down on those problems that you have in the world. Yes. And at this vantage point, your face is no longer barred down in problems, but it's looking directly at King Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I'm no longer worried about the that I'm standing high on the mountain Looking at God right before me and what he's going to do for me in my life. Talk 
Amen. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take the entry. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. for just your presence and you, just how you come in as a gentleman into the church yes. and just touch hearts and souls. Yes. Yes. We thank you, God, and we ask that you just continue to be with us as we go out of this place. Yes. Be with us in our homes and the various places we may travel so that we can just tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ and about how a relationship with him is like none of us. We honor you and we praise you. Now to the one who can keep us from failing or falling. May his sweet peace rest rule and abide with you and your family right now and forevermore. And let the saints of God say amen. 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 God bless you.